Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here, back from vacation. I was gone the entirety of last week, went to the Grand Canyon and Yellowstone National Park, finally went outside and touched some grass, well, some some, uh, some desert rock and some acidic water in case of Yellowstone. But yeah, beautiful places, glad I got the chance to go and spend some time there. But, of course, since I took some time off to go outside and enjoy the wonderful graphics of real life, Wargaming released a slew of uh, news about the game. We got the Waterline update. We got a couple of dev blogs with some pretty big um, announcements. The biggest one, in my opinion, being that the French battleships are finally getting their rotating smokestacks. A uh, feature that was announced way back when they were in development. They even showed it off in the, one of the Dev Diary videos, but alas, when the French battleships were released, they, well, didn't have it. I believe the Alsace and the Republic, which was the France back then in development, uh, were supposed to have them, but they didn't. And that was kind of a running joke on this channel, how I kept mentioning it. And now it, they're, they're actually doing it, so that's nice to see them finally follow through on that but anyway we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of the most recent dev blogs that has the details of some of those ships that were apparently announced in the waterline video and article and take a look at these new ships so if you do find yourself enjoying this video make sure to drop a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel uh that of course always helps out with the youtube side of things especially with appeasing the algorithm so let's go ahead and get on into it oh by the way i am going to be going through the waterline video and articles and such and all the other various news bits that were released last week and I'll probably just make one big catch-up video to talk about the big bits of news that were announced last week but let's take a look at these ships here now because this is the most recent dev blog uploaded one day ago out of the day of recording it's on the 17th if you want to check this out I strongly encourage you to do so it is linked in the description down below all right so they say new ships close testing 12.6 Update 12.6 brings five new ships, American Super Battleship Maine, Italian Super Cruiser Piemonte, European Battleship Carl XIV Johan, British Battleship Scarlet Thunder, and British Cruiser Defense will be added to the game for testing. I'm sure you guys miss me mispronouncing names left, right, and center. Alright, so they start out with the Maine. So they say, Maine represents... Our take on a further development of Montana, achieved by replacing the Tier 10 battleship's four triple turrets with four quadrupled ones. Regarding the naming of the ship in the 1920s to 50s, only a few U.S. states remained shipless, and Maine was one of them. Moreover, the planned third ship of the Montana class, uh, BB-69, nice, would have been named USS Maine had she been built. Maine is armed with 16 406mm Maine battery guns. Compared to Montana, Maine's guns have a higher salvo weight, but a longer reload time and lower accuracy. She also has decent armor and good AA defenses, but a vulnerable citadel. The ship has combat instructions, which, once activated, increase the damage of her AA defenses and reduce the damage taken from fire and flooding. In order to activate it, the player needs to continuously score hits on an enemy ship. Maine's main set of consumables are similar to Montana, but she has no fighter or spotting aircraft consumables. Okay, Maine, honestly, a little underwhelming for and for for a super ship. The different combat instructions are interesting. Increased AA damage, something that you know, players would appreciate, and reduced damage from fire and flooding is definitely quite interesting as well. But it's kind of overshadowed by the fact that she has 16-inch guns as a super ship. So she doesn't have really any overmatching capabilities, especially when compared to the other super ships. Doesn't have SAP or anything. Now, I'm assuming she does have the American Super Heavy AP shell. And when you have 16 of Montana's guns in one ship, that is going to be something that can easily delete many a ship that slips up and shows this ship broadside. But when it comes down to it, when you find a player that knows what they're doing and just bows tanks you for forever, it's going to be kind of frustrating to deal with. On Grand, she does have 16 guns that do have HG shells, I'm assuming. Haven't looked at the detailed statistics just yet. And that could be a solution there. But let's take a look at what her parameters are. 
So she has 115,000 hit points, 32 millimeters of plating, uh, torpedo detections at 51%, 4x4, 406s with a firing range of 24.2 kilometers. Yeah, this is the uh, super heavy AP. Maximum AP shell damage is 13,500, and the AP initial velocity is 762 meters a second. So again, that good super heavy AP that... Um, Again, hits like really 17 or 18 inch AP, but of course, since it's 16 inch, it, it can't overmatch 32 millimeters of armor, or really much at all. Again, at that tier, especially again being a super ship, uh, it's going to be very slow AP shells too. If you've ever played the American battleships from tier eight on up, because they have the super heavy AP shell, it's a heavier shell, travels slower through the air, has terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible flight characteristics, and it t feels like it takes forever to get to where it's going. But reload time, 35 seconds. Now, if this was a, a, a tier 10 ship and had a 35 second reload time with 16, 16 inch guns, that'd be pretty good, but this is a super ship, you know? It's got a lot of competition to go up against, like the Satsuma with her eight 20-inch guns, or the um, the Hanover with her eight 19-inch guns, or the oh god, I can't remember the the Patri with its of course uh, Republic with another turret with its great French AP and reload time. Ah man, so it's got the smallest out of the super ships guns, but ah man, I don't know, I don't know. Again, it's all in testing; it could change. Sigma of 1.7, maximum dispersion of 302 meters. Now, if this is the American battleship dispersion, even though it's more terrible and she has a Sigma of 1.7, it should at least be consistent. And if you hear me talk about the Massachusetts, her dispersion is terrible, but it's consistently terrible. So you know what to expect. So after you get used to the ship, you can you kind of got the gist of, you know, where to aim and the lead that you need to give and all that jazz. Uh, the combat instruction, bonus to continuous AA damage is 25%. It reduces the damage from fires by 65% and the same for flooding. Okay, that's actually pretty nice because, of course, in today's World of Warships, HE spam is, of course, everywhere and very much a thing at higher tier. So the ability to just slap a button and take 65% less damage from fires is pretty nice and flooding too. And it lasts for 45 seconds. Okay. And you need 13 hits with the main battery guns to reach 100% progress. And you have 16 guns. So there's a very good chance that if you just get one really good salvo on, on something, like even if the shells bounce, you just need to hit the thing. You could easily get this up. Again, I haven't played this ship yet, so I don't know how the dispersion is going to go, but that's what we have to look at here. And it takes 50 seconds for the adjustment firing progress to decay. So you've got... Shoot, man, really, you got to be firing pretty consistently. Dang. So you got to be, yeah, because they have 35 seconds reload time, so you fire, and then, again, if you're at range, the flight time on these shells is, you know, 10 seconds at longer range. So you got to really be booking it with the guns to get uh, this combat instructions up. But again, with the amount of guns, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Okay, and let's see, anything else? I just got the typical American secondaries. Damage con, 20 second action time, the American damage con. Uh, repair party, 28 second action time. Uh, yep, looks like the normal, again, that, 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 like, like they said, it's Montana's symbol, so they improved the American battleship hill and all that jazz. Okay, so, seems a little weak for now, but again, if you can catch those players that aren't paying attention and just Thanos snap them with the 16, 16 inch guns, I, th I, th I see some potential here. I do think it's a weaker super ship, this is very close to just being a tier 10, in my opinion, especially with that reload time. But again, we'll see as time goes on. I really think you could rip the uh, in the in the firing instructions, maybe like a 40 second reload time, and then boom, you got a tier 10 ship right, right there. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that because that, that gives more giving ideas. All right, so the Italians, the Piemonte or Piemont, Piemont, Piemonte. Yeah, y'all shout at me the comment in the comment section. All right. They say Piemonte Piemonte is a representation of the 22,000 ton battle cruiser project made by Italian shipbuilding company Alsando in 1936. The assumption is that such cruiser such cruiser could have been built or completed after the end of World War II and undergone a further modernization in the early 1960s when Otto Malaris 76/62 guns could be installed. 
We decided to name such a large cruiser after the region of Piedmont, the birthplace of the United Italy. It seems that such a powerful ship deserves an equally significant name, so in the case we chose not to follow the traditional naming conventions for light or heavy cruisers, which are um, cities or condotteris, respectively. Piemonte will be a continuation of the Venezia branch. She's equipped with 12 254mm main battery guns, which deal good damage per salvo but have a low rate of fire. The ship is also armed with eight torpedo tubes, which have solid range but damage, which have solid range and damage but low speed. Piemonte also has a well-protected citadel and good protection from HE shells, while also having high speed and good maneuverability. It again sounds like a bigger Venezia. So she has repair party, exhaust smoke. Uh, no fighter or spotter. So let's see. Uh, 61,400 hit points, 25 millimeter plating, 30 second fire time, 19% uh, torpedo, uh, torpedo damage reduction, 4x3, 254s, 17.8 kilometer range. So you have to take the range mod if you want to get that out any further. Uh, it does have sap shells, 7,000 sap alpha, uh, 67 millimeter of sap pin, and the sap comes out at 945 meters a second. AP shell does a max damage of 6,150 and also comes out at 945 meters a second. 21 second reload time though. That's, I mean, hey, 12 sap guns. I, yeah, I can see that because again, Venezia, if you played her, oh boy, man, or any of the sap ships. Sap, sap is pretty nutty. So that's typically the trade off, th th those reload times. Alright, um, let's see. Torpedoes 2x4, 533s, maximum damage 13,900. 13.5 kilometer range, but they are the sea mines with the 56 knot top speed and 95 second reload time. And damage con, repair party, and exhaust smoke generator. Okay, I mean, hey, this really does seem like a bigger Venezia and a bit more of a natural progression of the line. So if you like Venezia, you'll probably like this thing. Again, it's a super ship, so you will probably lose credits playing. The thing now, one of the more interesting things in this dev blog, we have a freaking Swedish Alaska almost. So, the European battleship Carl the Fourteenth Johan. So, yeah, this thing is something, and their reasoning for it is. It can be said that this battleship was assembled using various pieces of shipbuilding history. Let's imagine, imagination, that Germany began building one of their Schnell Großkampfschiff designs during World War I. 45,000 tons, 30 knots, four main battery turrets, but completed it only in 1930s with a new main armament and for a new owner, Sweden, which was actively developing its navy at that time. In the 1940s, the ship could have undergone a further modernization with the incorporation of the newest dual-purpose guns and AA guns manufactured by the Swedish company Bofors. Some of the most powerful Swedish ships in the 19th to 20th century were named after kings of Sweden. The 50,000-ton battleship is the best candidate to inherit the name of the 19th century ship of the line, Carl XIV Johan, which, in turn, was named after the legendary Jean-Baptiste... Ooh, boy! Jean Baptiste Jules Bernadette, Carl XIV, Johann of Sweden, outstanding military leader and founder of Bernadotte, of, of Bernadotte dynasty that now reigns in Sweden. Again, I know y'all have been missing my mispronunciations. Carl XIV, Johann is armed with 12 305mm main battery guns, which have a quick reload time, but low damage per salvo and short range. The ship is also armed with 16 torp tubes, which have wide launching angles. The ship has a well-protected citadel and good concealment values, but rather a, a low HP pool for a battleship. Consumables are represented by Hydro and Repair Party with improved settings. So, it sounds like it's supposed to be a close-range ship against 16 torpedo tubes. That's um, nothing to, to scoff at. Let me see. Where are the torpedo tubes located? Ah, oh, there they are on the back. Looks like, yeah. You have the 4x4, so you get um, 4x4 on one side, 4x4 on the other side. Okay, so they're not like the whole mounted ones. Okay, so let's see what this thing's like. 72,900 hit points at tier 9, which is on the lower side, although not terribly, terribly low. 32 millimeters of plating. They did say its citadel is, is well protected, so it's really going to come down to how well protected this thing is. Um, it could be like the Odin, where it has excellent armor, but lower HP to compensate for that. Which, in that case, 
should be pretty workable. 20% uh, torpedo damage reduction, which is terrible. 4x3, 305 to the range of 19.1 kilometers. The HE does a maximum damage of 4,350. They can pin 51 millimeters of armor and a 28% fire chance. The AP shells have a maximum damage of 8,400, an initial velocity of 865 meters a second. Reload time of 23 seconds with a 180 time of 30 seconds, the sigma of 1.8, and a dispersion of 251, which is. Uh, it's going to depend on the dispersion pattern. If they get the German dispersion pattern, the current German dispersion pattern, because these are, this is a you know a German designed ship, it may not be too terrible, especially considering it's you know 23 second reload time. So it should be fairly workable. You can take the reload module to get that down lower. So there is that. Uh, torpedo tubes, 4x4, 533, 10,700 maximum damage, 13.5 kilometer range, 86 knot top speed, reloads in 86 seconds, okay? And then again, damage con, repair party, and hydro as well. The repair party is 28 seconds for the runtime, 364.5 HP per second, and you get four charges of that, reloads in 80 seconds. Hydro is five kilometer, five kilometer hydro lasts for a hundred seconds. Okay, um, I'm actually pretty interested in this thing. It's definitely one of the m most papery paper ships we've seen in a hot minute here. But yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm curious to see how this thing will progress. I, I do like the Dutch cruisers, and this sounds kind of sort of like them. But we'll see what happens with it. So we'll keep an eye on the Carl. All right. Then the Scarlet Thunder, which this is hilarious. We were talking in the clan's Discord about um, them normalizing one of the battle cruiser designs and turning into a premium ship last week. And then lo and behold, here they, 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 they go. They normalize it in terms of its characteristics and such and then make it into a tier 9 premium ship. So... Scarlet Thunder will visually resemble Duncan, but have different gameplay settings. Scarlet Thunder will keep most of Duncan's features, but her gameplay will be closer to that of a standard battleship. The ship will have better plating, 32mm, no torpedoes, and no engine boost. The main battery guns will have a longer firing range and reduce reload time, and the HE shells will deal more damage. Scarlet Thunder is armed with 9 for 19mm main guns, whose HE shells deal heavy damage and have high penetration. The AP shells have good efficiency and against slightly armored targets. The ship has good firing accuracy and good concealment values and quick rudder shift. However, some of the Duncan, she has weak protection against HE shells and torpedoes as well as a vulnerable citadel. Her consumables are re represented by Repair Party and DFAA. So it's literally just like you, you just British battleships one of the battle cruisers. That's literally what they did here. Like, that that's it. <laughs> it's a line with a wonky turret setup. Um, is the... They don't give the exact details of the repair party here, but... <sighs> since they don't mention it here, I'm going to assume it's not the dry dock hill. So you can't reprint one of your... You know, the, the entirety of your ship's back with one heel. So... Yeah, if you like, I guess, the Battlecruiser design, but you want to play it like a normal British battleship, kind of, that's slightly more maneuverable. Yeah. But other than that, okay. <laughs> and then one of the most interesting ship designs of all, the Defense. Boy, them British ship designers were on something. Ah, Defense is a large cruiser with a Nelson-like hull design and the 356mm main armament from King George V. Ah, so basically she went, she went around to the various King George V battleships and ripped off their number 2, or is it the B turret, however they organize, however they uh, classify their turrets and with, with, with the Royal Navy and all that jazz. So yeah, she, she, she has three of the 14-inch gun turrets that the King Georges they have above their first quad turret in the front and she has six of them all right all right if we're going all in we're going all in hms defense is a traditional name in the royal navy the last ship of this name was a large armored cruiser that sank at the battle of jutland one of the swiftsure class cruisers was to be hms defense launched in 1944 but it was renamed hms lion before completion 
The Finch is armed with six 356, 14 inch, uh, main, well, 356 millimeter, 14 inch main battery guns located on the bow of the ship, with, which deal good damage per salvo. Creature shells have a higher chance to cause fire, while the AP shells have improved ricochet angles. However, the main battery guns have a long reload time and their traverse speed is slow. Defense is also armed with eight torpedo tubes which with wide bow launching angles, so whole mounted torps. Her consumables are represented by repair party, hydro, and short burst smoke generator in different slots. Alright. So she has 60,600 HP, 25mm armor plating. Um, so her 14 inch guns have a 16.8 kilometer range. HE shell damage does 6100, maximum damage, 89 millimeters of HE pin, 41% fire chance. AP shells, maximum damage 10,500, and flies out the tube at 757 meters a second, same as the HE. And these have the improved pin angles, so against cruisers, these guns should be pretty good if they're accurate. Speaking of accuracy, what is her accuracy? 2.05 Sigma and 189 meters maximum dispersion so yeah which it really should be only having six 14 inch guns at tier 10 um i know it's a cruiser but like if you're only given six 14 inch guns at tier 10 they need to be accurate for you to well be able to do <laughs> anything so yeah i can see this thing potentially being you know very scary to cruisers especially with the improved pin angles like the um not the king george the duke of york has some fantastic uh, pin angles, which I'm assuming she shares with uh, defense here, and those guns can be very scary against cruisers. So her torpedo tubes, two by four, six twenty twos, uh, maximum damage twenty one thousand. So that's pretty good. Ten kilometer range, sixty seven knot top speed, reload time of ninety seconds. Okay. Um, again, damage counter repair party uh, repairs three hundred three HP per second, twenty eight second run time. Reloads in 80 seconds and you get three charges of that base. Hydro and short burst smoke, 15 second action time, uh, 40 second duration. Okay, I'm interested. I mean, again, if we're going full kooky, let's let's friggin' do it, War Gaming. <laughs> uh, might be better than the Nottingham. We we shall see indeed. So some interesting changes are happening to the Kitakami, which is the tier 10 Japanese uh, cruiser that has an absolute insane number of torpedoes. So what they're doing with her in order to balance her, because this is a ship that has 40 torpedoes, all right? She has 10 by 4, 610 millimeter torps, all right? So what they're doing is giving it the submarine loading mechanic. So they say the main balance changes for Kitakami will be the introduction of torpedo loaders similar to submarines. Two of them in total, one for each side of the ship. After firing all four torpedoes from one launcher, the torpedo launchers will re reload one by one. Each side of the ship can only reload one launcher at a time. The loading mechanic will reduce the frequency with which Kitakami can launch large torpedo salvos, but will still leave the ship able to actively participate in battles and gradually launch torpedoes when necessary. So in order to cut back on that um, on that torpedo spam, basically only one set of torpedoes can be reloaded at a time per side. Keep in mind, this ship will still have, uh, you know, friggin' 40 torpedo tubes, right? So... You're going to have five torp tubes per side with four torpedoes in each... I'm sorry, five sets of tubes on each side with four sets with four torpedoes in each set of tubes. So you still have a ton of torpedoes, all right? And what's the reload time now? Um, bu 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 reload time... Nope, that's that one. Reload time is 81 seconds. So... This is, of course, w without modules and such, so you can get that down probably pretty darn close to 60. So, yeah, Kitakami, her development continues to be interesting, and we shall see what happens with her at, in the future. So 12.6, that's going to be probably like, what, the um, October-ish patch, if this does go through. Oh, and the U-4501, the German submarine that was announced all the way long ago, and we haven't really heard much about it since then. So they've uh, they slowed her down. This is the German sub that could go 41 knots. She's now limited to the very slow top speed of 36 knots now. Uh, they have 
increase the diving plane shift time from 11 to 19 seconds, and they've reduced the dive capacity from 350 to 210, and the recharge rate has been improved from 0.8 to 2. The acoustic torpedo range has been increased from 6.3 to 8.5 kilometers, while the reload time was reduced from 91 to 60 seconds. The sonar range was increased from 6.3 to 8.5 kilometers, and they added the repair party, but it can only be used when surface. So what they say about it here is that the above mentioned balance changes will make it more difficult for U U5401 to quickly go behind enemy lines and fire torpedoes at close range without being noticed. At the same time, the range and cooldown of acoustic torpedoes are improved, which allows for more tactical approach in the submarine's gameplay, attacking enemies from unexpected directions and from a long distance, which leaves them time to counterplay. Reduction of the dive capacity and repair party available only in the surface state makes the submarine spend more time on the surface than before and hence have more chances to get spotted if not moving carefully in the battlefield. Some interesting changes for the U5401, this thing's been in dev hell for quite some time. Um, and that's all I'll say about that because that ship's just an absolute mess. So guys, let me know in the comments down below what are you excited for, which of these ships are you most excited about, which one are you least excited for. Let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers, thanks to you guys, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.